today we're in Athens, Greece. We're here to eat and we're going to be zipping all around town to show you the best food Athens has to offer. Athens food culture is vibrant, delicious and steeped in history. This is our third video from Athens and we're here to hunt down the best local food. Watch out for mouth-watering street food, heritage recipes and traditional Greek food. In this four-part series we'll show you the city's tastiest food, from hole-in-the-wall restaurants to delicious street food. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. cuisine is mouth-watering. There's just no other word to describe it. And so today we're going to be hopping all around town to find the best local food to show you. We're at our first stop and we are eating one of the most delicious things you could possibly eat when you're in Athens and that's a souvlaki pita. <laughs> We are the only traditional place with no potatoes, no gyro, those things here. What, my grandfather? Souvlaki pita is the king of Greek street food. You'll see it all over Athens. Every street corner has a restaurant selling this dish. But why are we at this particular restaurant or stall? It's because it's one of the best in Athens, if not the best. It's got a really long history. It's been around since 1950 and they serve up their souvlaki pita the traditional way. So I've got it in my hot little hand. Let me talk you through it. So you've got this really thick, fluffy pita. And inside, we ordered the pork souvlaki. So souvlaki is meat which is cooked on a skewer. Um, so you've got the chunks of pork souvlaki there. There's big, juicy bits of tomato. There's yogurt. There's uh, parsley, some red onions, sliced really finely, a little bit of chili, salt and pepper. So really, really simple. Let's get into it. Holy moly, that was the perfect first bite. The pork has a lot of texture, a lot of flavor. It's very smoky. And that pita, very smoky as well and very fluffy. A little bit chewy, so it's got a great texture. The zing of those freshly sliced onions just add a real delicious hit. are so juicy. Wow. It's brilliant. It's simple and it's packed full of flavor. And Costas is using his grandfather's recipe. So his grandfather opened this little, what was then a, just a little window selling this dish back in 1950. And 65 years later, he's still serving up that same recipe. That's a heritage dish right there. Now that was a great way of starting this day of eating. So souvlaki pita here, super common, but what you'll normally find is a bit of a different take on it. Um, they put potato chips in there, so french fries inside the wrap. That one's really, really traditional. So super natural, super clean flavors. Mm. And it was truly amazing. And I love the setup. It was the most tidy, together setup I've Good. ever seen for a street food seller. Really well done. He was just super... Um, efficient. Efficient, yeah. Mm. Loved it. That was a brilliant <laughs> start. Next stop. Our next stop is the last surviving dairy bar in Athens. So back in the 1960s, there used to be over 1,500 of these traditional dairy bars where people would stop by to grab their milk, their yogurt, have a coffee, have some dessert. But that tradition is dying out and this place is the last man standing. We're here to eat some Greek yogurt. Now, 
anything dairy gets me incredibly excited. So when we booked tickets to Greece, the first thing on my mind was Greek yogurt. And check this out, this is insane. So this is some incredible looking Greek yogurt covered in honey and some really fresh looking uh, walnuts all just broken up on top of there. And we've also ordered some, some well, cream off the top really. This is what's skimmed off the top and it's covered in that same honey again. But I'm gonna start with the Greek yogurt and those, those walnuts and honey mixture. Oh, look how creamy it looks. Get some walnuts. Missing the walnuts. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god. Oh. I've just gone to yogurt heaven. That is incredible. It is the creamiest yogurt I've ever had and it's really nice and sour. So any sweetness it's got is from the from the honey not from the yogurt itself so i don't think the yogurt would be sweetened at all let's get some more oh, and it's really sour and tangy so i believe this is a sheep's milk yogurt so it's got that extra tanginess from that mm. like nothing else i've ever eaten sheena spoke before about how there used to be thousands of these types of shops i don't know how there isn't still thousands because that is incredible I'd be eating that every day if I lived here. Oh, the flavor. It's unreal. Let's try this, this cream on top. Once again, with that um, honey all over it. Look at that oozy honey. It's a nice runny honey. Wow. Oh, flavor is completely different there. That's got a real... Um, creamy texture so it tastes like whipped cream actually the texture is like a whipped cream that's not being taken all the way and that is unreal as well I'm gonna go again look at the honey just glistening on it mm. oh man it's like eating a glass of cream the most silky smooth cream you've ever tasted and then once again the sweetness is just coming from the honey unbelievable but the yogurt I think is not gonna last long that's gonna get it's very rich so it's gonna be great for us to share that it's gonna be hard to finish that by yourself but the yogurt is so light and so fresh and tangy it's going down a treat Athens is a city just full of history and culture. So, so far the food today has been, had, had a great bit of history behind it. Uh, one place was opened in 1950, the other place opened in 1931. Next up we're going for Luca Mare's at a place that's been around for almost a hundred years. And then you've got this sort of history. So right behind me is a cemetery and that was first um, created in the 9th century BC and was used until the 3rd century AD. Incredible history in this place. It's an amazing city. And the food culture here is pretty incredible. So there is a history and a food culture dating back three and a half to four thousand years. I mean, it's unreal it's numbers. We've ordered up our Lucamares and these are as fresh as fresh gets. They came straight out of the hot oil. So check them out. They are basically a Greek donut, I suppose. So deep fried dough covered in a honey syrup. There's a lot of crushed walnuts over the top and also cinnamon. And the smell, oh, it's heavenly. I'm just gonna dive right in. Wow, 
Okay, so the Lucamares is really soft. It's not dense and doughy at all. It's very crispy, it seems. Amazing. They are light as air. They shatter when you bite into them because they have got this really crispy outer. And the inside is really pillowy. The honey syrup is really sweet and there's a beautiful fragrance from that cinnamon. The uh, walnuts also add a really great crunch. Mm. I can't get over how light and fluffy they are. They are a great texture. And Lucomanas are a really popular Greek sweet treat. And I can totally see why. This place has been churning Lucomanas out since 1923, so it's a bit of an institution. and up near the Acropolis to work up an appetite for our next spot. We're off to eat a meze feast. Now meze is made up of um, or small dishes really, savoury small dishes. They can be hot or cold and you stack on them over drinks. We ate here the other day and it was amazing. This is a really traditional place. There's a lot of meze places all around the city. Um, especially in the centre you'll find a lot of very touristy places. This place is not touristy at all and the meze is incredible. Most of our meze has arrived and this is one good looking spread so let me talk you through what we ordered. This here is saganaki which is fried cheese. It comes with some olives and some uh, pickled chilies. This here is that ziki, the famous Greek dip made of uh, strange yogurt and cucumber. There's a whole lot of olive oil chucked over the top there too. Marinated anchovies, one of my absolute faves. This here is a behemoth of a Greek salad. So cucumber, red onion, oregano, capsicum, um, tomato, and a whole slab of feta. Our fresh calamari has arrived. So that's deep fried calamari or squid. Let me just pop that there. Oh, it smells real good. And then we've got a little pitcher of wine, which I'm just gonna pour. Look at that and then some freshly toasted bread to go with it all. And I absolutely <laughs> love this style of eating. You just pick away really slowly, have some drinks. It's a really social way of eating. Let's get into the time critical food first. So the saganaki, I'm gonna get that lemon juice all over it. And we don't want it to cool down, otherwise it'll turn a little bit squeaky. So I'm just gonna get this bit right here. Oh yeah, fried cheese. I mean, no words can explain how good it is, right? It's just very lightly floured. It is a whole range of different types of cheeses for Saganaki. I'm not really too sure what that is, but it's very salty, very pungent, and it goes perfectly with these pickled chilies. Mmm. Not overly spicy, but very, very vinegary and tangy. And sort of cut through the, um, the saltiness of the cheese. And now the other dish that's gonna cool down really quick, the calamari. But first of all, how juicy are the lemons? The, um, we've got this lemon tree at our Airbnb and we've been um, grabbing lemons off of that and they are just full of juice and so, so tangy. Oh, they're out of this world. All right, let's get this lovely bit here. Mmm. Mmm. Perfectly fried. The squid is still super tender. That flouring on the outside, the batter, is really crisp and crunchy. And it's well seasoned, so it's got a lot of flavour. Mmm. This is a truly spectacular way to eat food. I love that the dishes are quite small so you can get a massive spread. They're all very affordable as well so you don't feel like you're, you're restricted in just getting a big spread of different things and that's why we've got this brilliant makeup with the salad and the fish dishes and the dip and the cheese. We're really able to sort of go to town. Let's get some of this um, tzatziki. Oh. Mm. 
Oh, wow. Mmm. Oh, it's super creamy. It's got a really strong parsley taste. And that olive oil on the top is really coming through strong. There's actually, oddly, a little bit of a chili taste. But I think that might be coming from the olive oil, so it might be quite a, um, a spicy olive oil, so it has a real zing to it. Definitely one of the more interesting prepared dishes on the table for me are these anchovies. So they're pickled in vinegar, but they're pickled with chili and parsley. You can see that all over them and they've been drenched in olive oil. And so that pickling gives them a beautiful tangy flavor. I absolutely love these little guys. Anchovies sort of any form are good. They're just an amazing wee fish. And this particular way, it works really well. So these, are, these aren't hot. So these can just sit and you just pick away at them really really good and something I'm just really getting a flavor for in my mouth is that tzatziki that I had before the spiciness is not from the olive oil it's garlic I'm getting a huge garlic hit now mm. anchovies are incredible let's assemble the ultimate mouthful of Greek salad all right I just want um, cucumber, red onion, feta. Also, a huge chunk of this tomato. Mm. Wow, again, it's the produce that's the hero. So you can really taste the sunshine almost in those tomatoes. The feta is very, very creamy. The um, onion's very bright and vivid, and as is the cucumber. Like, it's very simply dressed. It's literally olive oil and then the dried oregano over it. But that's all it needs because the produce is of such good quality. This place is awesome. It's just packed full of locals. It's just a lot of old guys sitting here having a beer, snacking on some small plates. This is exactly the type of eating that Thomas and I love to do when we're traveling.